What's up, beautiful people? Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the steps to writing the DBQ essay. And I'm not gonna to lie to you, this process is pretty brutal. But I've been doing this since 2004, and my students have been pretty successful. It is my hope that when you are done writing your essay, and when your teacher is done reading it, the first thing they're going to say is, it's amazing, so amazing. Now remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and the journey of writing a DBQ begins with step one, which is to read and analyze the prompt. So this is the sample prompt that we are going to be working with, and I encourage you to pause and go ahead and read it. But the important thing is, as you read the prompt, you should annotate the different parts of the question. In the margins, break down the question. What is the prompt asking you to do? Are there multiple parts to the question? And in this question, we need to describe and explain similarities and or differences between the New England and the Chesapeake regions. And we also need to analyze why by 1700, these two regions evolved into two distinct societies. You also want to identify what historical thinking skill is being assessed. In this case, we have a comparison question, and you will only be able to craft a clear thesis statement that answers all parts of the question if you understand the prompt in its entirety. You always want to make note of the time frame the question gives you. You will only get points for providing historical evidence within the time frame of the prompt. In this case, the prompt specifically mentions by 1700, so nothing that happened after after 1700 will be relevant to earning you points on the rubric. Usually they will give you a time frame for the question. This prompt does not, but since the first permanent British settlement was established in 1607, it is safe to say your response should be largely focused on the time period 1607 to 1700. Step two is quick brainstorming time. Now the documents are hopefully going to help you answer the question, but before you look at the documents, start thinking about how you might go about answering this question without any documents. After a very short brainstorm, say less than two minutes, you might have a list like this in the margins. So perhaps you remember the New England region is Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Puritans came there, there was a Massachusetts Bay Company, the Chesapeake was Virginia and Maryland, Jamestown first British settlement, there was a starving time. If possible, try to organize your thoughts around different parts of the question. Think about what are some things you know about New England colonies, what are some things you know about the Chesapeake region. In this case, do you know any similarities, differences, and finally reasons they evolved into two distinct societies? So, you know, some similarities, maybe the only thing you can come up with is both regions had guys named John, John Winthrop and John Smith. And when brainstorming some differences, maybe you actually remember the Chesapeake had cash crops, maybe there was like tobacco, whereas in the New England, it was like religion and stuff, but you're not entirely sure of much else. The more organized you can make your brainstorming notes, the better off you are going to be. Now you will definitely come back to this brainstorm list after analyzing the documents and inevitably you will make a lot of revisions and have some stuff to add to it, but it's good to kind of do a quick brain dump. What do you know about the topic? Like I said, one to two minutes max. The reason this is important is by quickly brainstorming, you will more than likely come up with some outside information and historical examples that you can use to get some points. For instance, some of the info from the brainstorming session could be used to help you develop your contextualization that you will eventually start your essay off with. Now we're gonna go more into contextualization in another video, but basically things like the British colonies started in 1607 with Jamestown, the New England colonies were founded by Puritans, colonization would be difficult, there was joint stock companies. This is the beginning of a really solid contextualization that could get you a point and you haven't even touched a document yet. And other parts of your brainstorm may help answer part of the question by providing you a historically defensible claim to talk about differences between the two regions and a possible reason for the difference. So you've already kind of come up with that one had cash crops, the other one was more of a religious-based colony, there was a mixed economy maybe you remember, and the motives of those coming to the different regions, the New England colonies, religious freedom, whereas Puritans were coming there, whereas the Chesapeake was largely based upon profits, this could all kind of start to take shape early on before, once again, looking at documents. Next is perhaps the hardest part, step three interpret and analyze the documents in like 15 minutes. As you are doing this, you're gonna to wanna to view each document with these questions in mind. The first question you wanna think about is, what is the document about? Could you summarize the big idea in one sentence? Now your essay is not about summarizing the documents, but understanding the main point of a document is important and will set you up for doing this. How does the document connect to the prompt? 
How would you use your analysis of the document to answer the prompt and to support your thesis or your argument? This is what you should be doing with the documents. You are not describing what the document is about, but how the document helps defend your thesis. Next question, can you group or categorize the evidence found in the document? Does the document connect or make a similar historically defensible claim as another document? If two documents make the same point about a difference between the Chesapeake and the New England colonies, you're gonna wanna use them in the same body paragraph. Part of your analysis of the documents is understanding the relationship between different pieces of historical evidence. If you can, group similar documents together. With that in mind, a document may offer contradictory evidence, evidence that could be used to qualify or modify an argument, and if that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to group that type of evidence together as well. As you read the document, does it trigger any additional outside information, information not found in the document? If so, note that in the margins as well. And finally, is this document good for the extended analysis portion of the essay? And we're gonna cover that in a lot of detail in our next video. Now, if you were like me, when I first started learning about the DBQ, I thought this was crazy. That's a whole lot of things to keep in mind when looking at a bunch of different documents that you probably have never seen before on a prompt that you've never seen before that you couldn't prepare for. Look, I went to UCLA twice, majoring in history, graduated with some Latin words on my diploma, and I never had to do something this complicated in any of my classes. So let me show you what this might look like in real life. I think it's really important you come up with some kind of plan for organizing your thoughts when you are analyzing the documents. This template I'm about to show you is what my students use and they've been doing pretty well with it. And if you can get into the habit of putting your annotations in the same spot, it will help you organize your thoughts and when it's time to write your essay, you should be in a better position to get the points and to get out of this thing alive. So early on when writing a DBQ, this is how my students organize their thoughts. First, quickly source the document, who wrote it, when was it written, this might trigger some ideas, jot anything useful down right above the document. As you read the document, annotate it, mark it up. While on the actual essay, you might not write too many notes in the margins, it's a good idea in the beginning to train yourself to organize your thoughts. On the left side of the document, I tell my students to jot a few words as to what the document is about. This is the most important part. How can the document help answer the prompt? Think about, does this document help you come up with the historically defensible claim that can become a part of your thesis statement? Put this down on the left side as well. And as you go through the documents, you're going to want to group similar documents or documents that can defend a similar historical claim. Likewise, a document may contradict another document and you will want to acknowledge that complexity in your essay and make note of it also on the left-hand side. When reading the document, you might remember historical information that is not explained explicitly mentioned in the document, this can potentially become outside information to get you some points. And I tell my students to jot any outside information down right on the right hand side as well. And finally, you're going to need to do an extended analysis of at least three documents. I use the acronym HIPPO in my classes. Whichever one you use doesn't really matter. I have my students put their extended analysis annotations on the bottom right of the document as they get used to doing all the different parts of the rubric into timed essay format. So these are the three steps you should really do before you start writing your essay. In our next video, which you can find the link in the description, I'm gonna walk you through all the different things you're gonna to need to do with the documents, how you're gonna hip them, outside information, how do you use them to advance a thesis, so that one's gonna be really important. And like I said, the link is in the description. By the end of this video series, it is my hope that you will feel more comfortable writing the APUSH DBQ. This is just the first step in the process, knowing how to tackle each phase of the writing. If this video helped you out, go ahead and click like, leave a comment if you have any questions, tell some friends about the channel, and as always, have a beautiful day, peace.